Hello, welcome to another vlog. And in the words of Peters and Lee, come on in and close the door, metaphorically speaking. And as with last week's ratings topping vlog, I want to front load this with a demand that you simply get over yourself, find some much needed humility and surrender to your obvious need to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Just press the subscribe button, which is basically ringing the doorbell of truth. Yeah! I want to start with a great film by the Finnish director Juho Korsmanen, who a few years ago stole my heart with his black and white drama The Happiest Day in the Life of Oli Maki, based on the real life Finnish boxing champ who in 1962 fought for the world featherweight title against visiting American contender Davy Moore. This film is subtler and less obviously stylized, though again, it's actually a period piece set in late 90s Russia. It's compartment number six, a film that won the Grand Prix at last year's Cannes. Seidel Harla plays Laura, a Finnish student in Moscow, who is just breaking up, though she doesn't exactly know it yet, with the professor with whom she has been having a furtive affair. To get away from this nasty situation, she has resolved to take the long, arduous rail journey to Mamansk in the northwest to study rock drawings. She finds herself in the train's compartment number six, sharing it with a drunk, obnoxious young Russian guy called Vadim, played by Yuri Borisov. Very recently, and in a flourish of Passag self pity and spite, Vladimir Putin claimed that Russian culture and Russianness were being cancelled in the West. But the release of this excellent film proves him wrong. Here is a drama about a Russian character behaving appallingly to another character from Russia's vulnerable neighbouring country, Finland, and yet being humanly, in fact, romantically redeemed. They have a meat uncute, he is entirely loathsome and sexist, and yet something about the situation awakens his gallantry and friendship, especially when Laura desperately needs someone to get her to where these rock drawings are. Yes, here he is, a Russian without a Z on his clothes or in his heart. And the point is that there are millions of Russians who are not tainted by the malign mediocrity of Putin's chauvinism. This is a film with enormous charm. A film that I enjoyed very much this week was from Amazon Prime, and it's not a movie that's particularly cool to like. It's a spy drama thriller in the spirit of John le Carré called All the Old Knives, starring Thandiwi Newton and Chris Pine. Pine plays Henry, the careworn CIA agent who is still haunted by the calamity of eight years previously, when airline hijackers in Vienna killed a hundred passengers because they were somehow able to anticipate the security forces every move. Now, Henry is told that the CIA had a mole in their ranks that day. So it has become Henry's painful duty to interrogate every one of his colleagues, including Celia, played by Newton, with whom he was having at the time a passionate affair. Celia. It's been a long time. They've opened the books on flight 127. The hijackers had help from inside our station here in Vienna. We need to find out if we had a mole. Vic has me looking into flight 127. So this is an interview. I thought you were here to see if we still had that old spark. To old friends. Oh, you can do better than that. To old lovers. I basically really like the setup and premise of this. The key location is the posh restaurant in Carmel, California, which Henry has chosen for their meeting. And this is where the narrative flashbacks have their starting point. If Celia's answers aren't satisfactory, then Henry has the green light to terminate her with extreme prejudice. But could he possibly go through with that? Will the interrogation or interview or conversation in these glamorous, intimate surroundings, in fact, reignite the old flame. I said that this was a story in the style of John le Carre. It's not based on le Carre, but it does actually have a specifically British dimension. The original novel by Olin Steinhauer was inspired by a BBC TV drama, which had nothing to do with spies, but was about 
two ex-lovers meeting at a restaurant. How long has it been? Five years? Six years? Ten? How long has it been? Ten years? Eleven? Fifteen. No, it can't be that. Let's settle for twelve. That was the song of lunch, the tense, bittersweet, almost erotic encounter adapted from the narrative poem by Christopher Reed. And it was this mood that inspired All the Old Knives, which interestingly attempts to translate it into a spy thriller context and illicit love affairs are all about subterfuge and betrayal. Maybe you have to like this sort of thing, but it's a very entertaining piece of work. I'm signing off now with the traditional undignified demand for you all to buy my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. And here is where it gets really undignified. You can buy a signed, inscribed copy directly from me for the low, low price of £12.50, including UK postage. Just tweet me or post a comment if you're interested. And let's face it, who on earth wouldn't be? Be seeing you.